Hey folks, Andy here, thanks for joining me. Right, the next video in the Guitar Setup series was originally going to be all of the mechanical aspects of getting your guitar knocked into shape. So basically, pick up high intonation, action, neck relief. It started getting a little bit unwieldy, started feeling a little bit like trying to edit the Lord of the Rings box set. So I've decided I'm gonna split things down into sort of small bite-sized chunks, each one being a job that you can do in its own right. Now, most of these things start from the premise of having the strings that you're gonna play, so nice, fresh, but broken in strings. So I figured, why not make a start on restringing the guitar? It's dead simple, but a few little things that might make a little bit of a difference. Okay, we're gonna start off with the Les Paul that we've been working on, and I'm kind of bringing other guitar aspects as we need to, to cover off the, dif the uh, differences. So, first thing to think about is, if we're gonna restring it, we're gonna be taking off the strings that are already there. And we've got a couple of options for doing this. One is that we can unwind the strings and just sort of remove them from the pegs and pull them through. The other is that we can cut them. I've seen quite a few videos which ask the question, is it okay to just cut all the strings off in one fell swoop? And the answer is, yes, it probably is. Everybody seems to think it is. Your guitar is under a lot of tension, but your guitar is designed to operate under a lot of tension, so it should be fine. However, a few things to bear in mind. One is, if you look at the bridge and tailpiece set up on this Les Paul, you'll see that it's actually held in place entirely by the strings. Now, some bridges are and some bridges are not, and it's worth understanding the difference. So, on this one, if you take all the strings off, there is nothing to keep the tailpiece in place, and the bridge can easily fall off the studs if you move the guitar, and the thumb wheels that are just the height of the bridge can easily slip. So you really want to either keep some string tension on there or find a way to stop that happening. If you look at a Telecaster, things tend to be pretty well screwed down, so that's okay. A Fender-style vibrato tailpiece with the, the old-style sort of six screws, that's pretty much held down. But be careful with something like a Floyd Rose where you're balancing string tension against spring tension and you've got that bit where the knife edges are resting in grooves on a post I've actually seen those jump the grooves if you take all the strings off at once. So understand how your guitar works and then sort of figure out the approach that you're going to take. So what you could do is, if you have no reason not to, do one string at a time. Take a string off, replace it. So you're keeping the guitar pretty much under tension all of the time. That doesn't allow you access to get to the various parts of the guitar if you've got other maintenance to do. And on this one, on the Les Paul, I want to give the frets a little polish and I want to treat the fingerboard. So I really want the strings off. Now you've still got a couple of options that you can look at. One is that you can take all of the strings off and the other is that you could say, take the middle four strings and leave the outer couple of strings just to maintain some tension in there. In this case, I'm gonna remove all of the strings. Now to stop the bridge and tail piece from dismantling themselves, what I'm gonna do is use a little dab of this stuff. So this is just ordinary common garden blue tack. And I just wedge it against the thumb wheels and the bridge and against the tailpiece. And then when I take the tension off, those things will stay in place. You've got to be a little bit cautious putting anything on a guitar in case you mar the finish. On most finishes, you'll be absolutely fine. Now, this Les Paul has got a nitrocellulose finish. I have been doing this with Bluetack on my own guitars for many, many years, and I've never had any issue with it. But if you're unsure, just sort of check on a little bit of guitar that's not going to show, maybe on the back where it gets the belt rush or something like that. Just satisfy yourself before you go and do it. For me, this works absolutely perfectly. So I'm going to wedge the, the bridge and tail piece. That'll keep my adjustments nicely in place. And then I'm going to ease off the tension on the strings, just a couple of turns at the tuning pegs. And then I can get my cutters and I can cut the strings off. Take the strings off the bridge end and then carefully unwind them off the pegs up at the tuners. Just be careful, you've got sharp edges on those strings. Right, if you have got a guitar with a through block system like a strap, you're going to want to poke the strings out through the back of the block. If you've got a traditional telly, the strings are going to go out through the back of the body. If you've got Floyd Rose, you're going to have to undo the blocks and take the ends of the strings out. So we've got the guitar without any strings on it. Do any maintenance work you want to do, so anything with the pickups, anything with the neck, the frets, anything to do with the nut. And then let's look at putting some strings back on it. So it's always worthwhile, give the tuners a little wiggle, make sure that everything sort of feels relatively solid while you've not got any tension on them. 
the strings on the Les Paul are going to pass through the tailpiece from back to front, go over the bridge, saddle, noticing that there's like a little notch cut in there to locate it. Those notches are not always slap bang in the centre, but as long as the strings are running in the right place, don't worry about it. Gibson is not the most accurate machining company in the world ever, and it's quite normal to get things just a little tiny bit off centre. So over the saddle, over the nut, and onto the tuner. Friction points at the saddle and nut we want to eliminate as much as possible. You can buy things like Big Ben's nut source to just lube those points. Personally, I prefer to use a pencil, and I just scratch a little bit of graphite in there. You've got to be a little bit careful. If you've got something like a bone nut on your guitar that's porous, it's possible the graphite can get in there and mark it up. So again, your mileage may vary. On a plastic nut, you can draw it in and then just clean it off afterwards. Check it for yourself. Make sure that you're happy to do it before you do it. And if you're not, get something um, that's sort of transparent and designed for the job. Okay, so we've got the string coming through the tailpiece, going over the bridge, running down across the nut, and we're going to poke it through the hole in the tuner. Next question is, how much spare string do we need? I've, I'm sure I've seen videos that suggest two to two and a half times the distance between the pegs on the guitar. But if you look at this tuning peg from the side, you'll notice that it's quite shallow. And what we do not want to do is have more wraps of string than there's space for, because that is going to give you all sorts of tuning nightmares as things tension and loosen as you um, tune up the guitar and then play it. So what I tend to do is I work on a basis that for the wound strings, I will go from the peg I'm winding onto the distance to the next peg, cut the string off there. And on the unwound strings, I will tend to go on a distance of two or just under two. And that tends to give me a, a good amount of wrap, which pulls the string down to get a decent break angle across the nut, fills up the peg, but doesn't kind of overfill it. When you are putting the string on the Les Paul, you've got a hole on some guitars like my Strat's original tuners. You have a hole going through. I've got locking tuners on there now. So on Les Paul, just pull the end of the string through. On something like a, my Strat with locking tuners, you just want to poke the string through and then tighten the locking tuner, whether it's one with a nut on the back or a self-locker. On those guitars, you don't want any extra wind around. It, just keep it simple. It locks in place. So just put the string through, snip it off, lock it in place, snip the end off, wind it on, and that will do the job. On something like the telly that's got the slots, which is probably my favourite system, get the length of the string as we talked about, poke the end of it down into the, t into the uh, hole in the end of the peg, bend it out through the slot, and then put a couple of winds around it, and then tension it up, and that will lock in nice and solid. Now... Various different ways of attaching strings to pegs other than on locking tuners. You get people who will pull the string through, wind it back on itself in a knot. You get people who will pull the string through, wind it above the hole and then down below the hole so that the string locks onto itself and knots in place. And the idea of this is that it does the job of a locking tuner. But if you look at these pegs carefully, you'll see that they are concave. They, they're not so sort of parallel sided. And those strings because of that slope, I'm going to snick in and lock against each other. So the tuning pegs basically lock the strings anyway. And having done the over and under method for years, I now just simply put the string through, put one wind on it, turn the tuning peg, it locks solid. If a guitar's going out of tune, it's really, really not going to be because it's slipping on the tuning peg, unless you're very unlucky. It's more likely to be because you've got friction at the nut and or at the saddle. Or maybe your tuners are really worn and they're actually slipping. Right, once we've got that done, another little thing to think about. There are different ways to string guitars that a lot of people tell you affect the tension. Now, the tension of the string is set by how heavy the string is, how long the string is, and what note you're tuning it to, and that's all. So it doesn't matter what the string is doing beyond the saddle and beyond the nut as far as tension goes, but as far as the stiffness of the string when you're playing it goes, it can make a really big difference. If you have a really long string that's going in a straight line with very little break angle across the nut and saddle, when you stretch, when you bend a string, you're stretching it, and the stretch will flow through the, uh, the nut, flow across the saddle, and you've got all that extra string that you're taking the tension out of. 
Now, it may mean that you end up having to bend further to get the note change you want, but the bend will be easier. So if you want to make your guitar feel a little bit slinkier, if your guitar is a bit on the tight side, and it's a type of setup where you can do this, for instance, on the Les Paul, you can top wrap the bridge. And top wrapping means that you take the string through from the inside of the tailpiece and wrap it over the top of the tailpiece. So instead of getting an angle like that coming from the tailpiece to the bridge, you get an angle like that. It's flatter. On the tuning peg side, instead of winding down the tuner, you can go through the hole and wind up the tuner to the top, which again, instead of giving you an angle bent like that across the nut, gives you a flatter angle like that. This will make the guitar feel slinkier, but there are a couple of downsides to it. It will reduce the downward force on the saddle and on the nut. You're more likely to get that sort of sitaring effect where the string vibrates against the saddle or nut rather than just off the inside edge of it. And you may well find that the, the sound of the guitar is not as good because you're not transferring the vibrations through as efficiently. Personally, I prefer to have the tailpiece wound down to the deck. It goes across the bridge with as, as sharp and clean a break as it can. And at the nut end, I like it to be nicely and solidly pulled down against the nut. If you look at a set of locking tuners, you will generally find that they're either graduated or adjustable for the height of the peg because you don't get the control of the number of winds that you're putting on for how much downward tension. You soon get an eye on this. I generally like the strings to come out from pretty close to the bottom of the peg, and that works nicely for me. And you don't get things like strings jumping out of the slots when you hit hard on that low E string. And of course, everything changes the moment you get a locking nut set up. So the strings go over the metal nuts, held in place by the metal blocks, and they're pulled down by the retaining bar and onto the tuning pegs. But all they're doing literally is getting you up to pitch. They have no effect on how the string feels because the playable section just goes from the inside of the nut to the bridge. Of course, because everything locks up at the nut end, you can't access the tuners. So you've got fine adjusters. Generally set these to about the middle, get everything in tune, lock it up at the nut end, and then you've got the biggest range of adjustment when you're playing. Of course, with time, you just tend to get used to whatever works the best for your own guitar. And because with the Floyd, we cut the ball end off, it means that if you break a string at the bridge, you could wind a bit extra off the peg if you've left it on there, pull it through and stick the broken end into the block, lock it up, and you're good to go. So maybe this is one of those times when those uh, extra bits of wire on the tuning peg are worth putting up with, or maybe not. The end of the strings, how you dress your strings, right, a couple of things on this. I have seen, and I used to do it, an argument that says when you take your wound strings, if you bend the end at 90 degrees or more, it kind of pinches the wrap against the core and stops them losing tension. But you're not putting the string under tension until it's gone around the peg anyway. I've stopped doing it because what it ends up doing is it leaves little bits of string sticking up and they snag on the inside of the case. If you're putting the sliding into a soft case, they tend to snag on the soft inside and then drag as you're pulling them out. So now, once I'm sure that the guitar is holding its tune, that I've got enough wraps on it that it's not going to slip, I tend to cut these off pretty short because otherwise, well, I've done it before, where I've handled a guitar badly, picked it up, and in some way managed to actually impale a finger or thumb, and I've ended up sort of doing a gig with blood on the fingerboard of a, a maple fender, and it looked absolutely dreadful. So I would tend to do that. When you're winding them, though, do just kind of ease the string up a little bit because what you don't want to do is end up just scouring like a, a circle in the fascia of the headstock on your guitar. Do that on each string, get the guitar tuned up, and then to stretch the strings in, boy, I've seen some, some violent string stretching where people treat it as though they're as you call bow people. Uh, no, don't, you don't need to do that. Just a little bit of gentle pulling on the strings. You can buy a tool to do this, but hey, you've, you've got fingers, use your fingers. Just gently ease the string. Do it along the length of the string at three or four different places. You're, all we're doing now is we're kind of stretching out the crystal structure of the metal, and we just want to do it as, as evenly as possible. Get the string stretched in just a little bit, tune it up, and then just play it. Play it with lots of horrible overbending, reaching the guitar, and I usually find then that it's good enough to play it for 10 minutes as a sort of brief playing period. I wouldn't want to do that before 
immediately before I recorded or went on stage. But do that, play the guitar for a few minutes afterwards, and it's going to be pretty close. That's really all you need to do as far as stretching strings in goes. The strings that you take off, make sure you count them and dispose of them properly. The number of times I've had the end of a string lying about, and when I've run the vacuum cleaner over, it makes a horrible noise when it sucks up a bit of a 10-gauge string. If you are winding your strings on using one of these tuning peg winder things, if one you're doing the, the rough wind on, so you're not bothering about getting the guitar actually to pitch, if you put the tuning pegs next to the one that you're doing vertically, you've got more room, the thing's less clacky as you turn it. The other thing I will say is that if you are running a guitar with a floating trem system, you're going to have to go through this cycle a few times because the strings balance the spring for tension, and as you tighten each string up, you're basically pulling the bridge forward, which slackens all the other strings. So on something like a Strat or one of the guitars with a Floyd on it, you tend to have to go through this maybe two or three times until it's close enough that it will actually stay in tune for you. Of course, there are different details that come in. There are different sort of bridges. You might have a Vibrola-type bridge or a Bigsby. You might have an acoustic guitar. You might have a Jaguar. You might have a Kayla. The details are different, but the principles are the same. I will cover acoustics off in a separate video because whilst the principles are the same, they can be a little bit of a different fiddle. And there you go. That's pretty much all there really is to stringing a guitar. Take it slow and steady if it's the first time you've done it. I know a lot of this stuff is totally obvious, but hey, there are people out there who will take their guitar into a shop to get the strings changed. You do not need to do that. Just follow these basic rules. Take it easy. For your specific guitar, have a look online. There are usually instructions that will explain how the bridge works, how the tuners work. When I got my Fret King, the first time I went to change the strings, I could not for the life of me work out how to get the strings off it. I had to go and look it up because I'd never seen that sort of tuner before. So if you're not sure, just check. Stick a question down below if you need to. Hope this is useful. Maybe give us a thumbs up. If you fancy it, hit the subscribe button. Look after yourselves. I'm Andy Picker, and I will see you next time out when I think we're probably going to look at setting the net relief. Okay, bye. <laughs>